Welcome back. So now you know the NuGet package ecosystem is out there where we can go and grab cool things like for instance the Entity Framework and the Entity Framework core in memory stuff so we can start working with the now it's a fake database and it's actually a real SQL database in memory and of course you can use the exact same setup later on to actually write to a real database so that's kind of the power of this that the in memory one is kind of a we're going to use the exact same way to write to a real database as we do to the in-memory one, which is uh, very cool for us. So how do we do this? Well, first we need a dependency for this new package that we want to use called the Entity Framework Core in Memory. So what I'll do is I'll right-click my data access layer here like this. I'll say Manage NuGet Packages and I'll go in here. I'll show this on the Mac in a second as well. I'll go in here and I will go into Browse and here I'll paste in Entity Framework Core in Memory, just like I did in the last lesson outside on the website. I'll do the same here. The browser is pretty much just a link to the website, I guess. And here we have it, Entity Framework Core in Memory. And there's a lot of downloads there, about half a million. There we go. And now, one thing you have to notice here right away is that we're going to talk versions now. Because when I made these recordings, I didn't have version 2.0. It wasn't there for the .NET Core Framework when I built um, the application, when I started up. Now, one week later or a few days later, they actually published or released version 2.0, but I don't have that yet. We could go in and start updating our actual project right here, and I think I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I want to do is next time we build a project in a video, I'll make sure that we do it on 2.0. But this is normally what also happens in company. You just don't go in and just update everything out of the blue, just because you feel the new framework is cool. It'll take hours to develop, it'll take hours to test it all, it'll take hours to make sure everything still runs as you want it. There's so much work to just update to a new version. So what we'll do instead is, if I try to install this now, I'll get an error, because I don't have what, what is required, which is the core framework of 2.0. So what I'll do is I'll just downgrade the actual entity framework into 1.1.2. So I'm going to use an older version of the entity framework core because I have an old, older version on my machine, .NET Core, right? I hope that will give some reason behind that, that makes sense for you. I'll do an install right here, and that's all I have to do. Now it pops up with a list of all the packages you require to actually do this in memory. So there's a lot actually to do here. I'll say accept for that. One thing you should notice is you actually got dependency injection right there, but we'll get back to that later. That was one of the packages. Now I have it installed and I could update it later on if I wanted to, but to do that again, you need to first update your .NET Core setup, and that is a few videos of its own. So we're not going to do that. Good, now we have the data access layer installed right here. And um, you can see that by expanding dependencies and expanding NuGet right here, and you'll see it's right here. Entity Framework, there we go, in memory. So now we have the package available. And by the way, you might have a pop-up saying something, I'm sure you want to install it. You'll just say yes, and you can just, I don't want to see this message anymore. Good. It's installed. We're not going to use it yet. Instead, I'll spend some time just doing the same thing for the Mac users. Give me a second here. We're inside the Mac here, and I'm just going to go to a data access layer I just created. This is just a, a dumb package right here. And I'm going to right-click that one, and I'm going to say add. I'm going to say add NuGet package. And then I have a similar dialog like you showed before on the Windows machine. I'll paste this in right here, the same framework core in memory like I did on the Windows machine. Here it is. I'll select the right version just like I did on the Windows machine. There we go. I'll say add package. And then I'll pretty much just step by step follow the guide, just like on Windows. It's very simple to get that package up and running on the um, Mac as well. So now in the end it says it's installed, successfully added. And again, if I expand here, and I say packages, here you'll see all the beautiful things that I require to actually start using the .NET Core framework. Sweet! Next lesson we'll start using it. See you next time.